Hello students. In this video we're going to apply some of the calculus principles that we've learned up to this point to solve a rather uh, straightforward physics problem. Okay, so we have a ball that's thrown vertically upward from a roof of a 48 foot tall building. So um, this S of T is the position function and you can see the initial position is 48. If you plug in T is 0 um, this term will be 0, this term will be 0, so you get S of 0 is 48, so clearly you're starting at 48 feet tall. Your initial velocity is going to be 96 feet per second. Some of you that know something about physics, you'll know that this is the initial velocity, and its height after t seconds is given by this function. Um, we're asked these two questions. You want to find the max height, and what's the velocity when the ball hits the ground? So let's go ahead and solve that. Um, I'll remind you that the velocity is the instantaneous rate of change of the position with respect to time. So it's ds dt. Okay, it's the first derivative of the position function. And the ball hits the ground when the height is zero. Okay, so you just um, really need to keep those two um, bullet points uh, in mind when solving this problem. Okay, I'll plot the function just to give you a geometric perspective. So here we are, this is negative time, so of course this isn't occurring, but you get here at around 48, and uh, that's when the ball launches, and this is when the clock, clock starts. So this is t is 0, it's 48, and the ball's going up. Now this is not the trajectory of the ball, this is the um, position of the ball versus time. The ball's going up, and then it's coming down, and supposedly going past the building, and it's going to hit the ground. So what's happening is the ball is going, as the, here I'll make this little hand, the ball, the ball's going up, and then as the ball's going up, it reaches its max height and then comes back down. So notice that it's changing direction at the instant it hits the max height. So if it's going up, then we um, are giving that velocity a positive number in this particular coordinate system, the way we've set this problem up. So you notice that that means the tangent lines are also positively oriented. They're going in the positive direction up and to the right as oriented by the axes. This is the positive direction. This is the positive direction. Um, the, rise, uh, the run and the rise are both positive. So this is positive slope. Um, likewise, this is negative slope. So this is um, going in a negative direction, positive direction, negative divided by positive is negative so this is going down this is the ball coming back downward but at the peak it changes direction and that's where you're changing from positive to negative and the only place that you're neither positive nor negative is when it's zero so this is when the, velo the velocity is zero once it reaches its peak once the ball reaches its peak at that instant so that means we have a horizontal tangent line there so we'll hit, we'll hit max height when the velocity is zero okay so keep that in mind we anticipate that's going to happen. Looks like it's going to be around three seconds. We can't be for sure because we're reading this off a graph, um, and it looks like it's going to hit the ground just after six seconds. Okay, so we'll, we'll use those for our sanity check when we um, get our numbers. All right, let's proceed with solving the problem. Max height occurs when the ball change at the instant the ball changes direction. So um, we'll take the derivative. That's ds dt. We'll use the power rule on this function, and we just get 96 minus 32t. Um, this occur, max occurs, max s occurs when um, the derivative is zero. We already reasoned that out. So we'll set the velocity equal to zero. And we solve and get t is three seconds, which um, corresponds with what we anticipated it. So our intuition was correct. Um, then the max height, uh, we have to plug this three seconds into the position function to determine what the height is. And uh, you just plug that number in, you get 192 feet, which, yeah, it's over 150 feet. So, yeah, that looks like that's about right. Um, so our, geometry, our geometric intuition um, goes along with what the um, arithmetic is telling us. Now, let's just um, find out what the velocity of the ball is when it hits the ground. Okay, I entered my answer in for the max height. Now we'll get the velocity. Okay, it hits the ground when s of t is equal to 0. 
Now, a very common mistake that students make is they want to set the velocity equal to zero when it hits the ground. But of course, that can't be true because when a ball hits the ground, it bounces back up, right? If the velocity were zero, the ball wouldn't bounce back up. Um, it would ha wouldn't have any energy. So, of course, when a ball hits the ground, it hits it with a velocity. So the velocity is not zero when it hits the ground. Its, its velocity is zero when it comes to rest. Okay, so you have to keep that straight. So it hits the ground when the um, height is zero. So it went up, hit the max velocity, or max um, height, um, velocity was zero, then came back down and then hits the ground. Okay, and actually went past the um, top of the roof of the building and hit the ground. So we set the position equal to zero. And when we set the position equal to zero, we have to solve a quadratic. So we just um, factor out a minus 16. You could do this by quadratic formula if you want. Here you can just complete the square as well. Anyways, you get 3 plus or minus 2 root 3s. Now, the 3 minus 2 root 3 is over here, so we don't want that in our answer. So we'll go with the 3 plus. Now, I underlined the 3 because that should look familiar to you. That's 3 plus 2 root 3. Okay, this is the additional 2 root 3 from when it hit its peak. So that's beyond the peak velocity. So this 2 root 3 is the time that we've gone on beyond the peak, and it came back down. So um, we take um, this number, and now we need to plug this into the velocity function, and we got the velocity here. So we plug it into the velocity, 3 plus 2 root 3, and we plug it in, and we get minus 110.851, if I go to three decimal places, feet per second, and that's the final velocity. I put a little approximation symbol because I did go with the, um, instead of going with the exact answer, I just went the decimal approximation, and I entered that in, and that is feet per second in terms of units, and that is the max velocity, and that is how you solve the problem. Good luck.